I said that applications need to deal with the fact that packets can be lost in the internet protocol. Well, instead of every application inventing its own way of dealing with this issue, instead we have another protocol, which handles it in a universal way, called the Transmission Control Protocol. So the design of the internet protocol imposes these constraints, that packets are limited in size, packets may arrive in a different order than they were sent, because one machine starts sending information to another machine, which gets forwarded around the internet in a best first basis. Who knows what will come out on the other side? Packets may be duplicated, or they might just be lost completely. So what do you do when you're in this situation? Well, you design another protocol that handles these issues and makes it easy to write applications that assume a more reliable interface to networking with another computer. So the transmission control protocol is designed to improve reliability of transmission. You get ordered, reliable transmission of arbitrarily long byte streams, which is implemented using the internet protocol. So we're still sending internet protocol packets. We're just putting particular data within them that specifies another transfer protocol that's just more reliable. And its fundamental properties are these. Each packet in a TCP session has a sequence number. So since the packet has a number, the receiver can get in a bunch of packets and put them back in the right order, regardless of the order in which they were received. And if the receiver receives the same information twice in the form of a duplicated packet, it can just check the sequence number and realize that it's got the same thing redundantly and ignore any duplicates. So this sequencing idea is a powerful way in order to take something that's complicated, something that's unreliable and difficult to process, and make it ordered and reliable. So all received packets are acknowledged by the receiver. So both parties know that the transmission succeeded, which is important because the sender knows that its information has been sent successfully and doesn't need to try to resend it. Packets that aren't acknowledged do get resent repeatedly so that if there's a temporary network failure, such as one router that happens to be a little bit overloaded and is dropping every other packet that it gets, well, eventually that signal will go through. And by the way, there's a built-in module in Python that implements the TCP. Okay, let's talk about a particular part. When two computers want to start transferring data between each other, they need to set up a TCP connection. All TCP connections begin with a sequence of messages called a handshake. And this sequence verifies that communication is possible. Because what's the point of chatting with someone if they can't hear you? So the purpose of the handshake is like saying, can you hear me? And figures out whether both computers are able to send data from one to the other and acknowledge that information. So we want it to be the case that both computers involved know that the connection is clear, that data can be transferred and acknowledged in both directions. So here are the goals of the handshake. Computer A needs to know that it can send data to and receive data from computer B. Computer B needs to know that it can send data to and receive data from computer A. It has to be the case that lots of separate connections can exist without any confusion. So different computers talking to each other, but also multiple different TCP connections among the same two computers. Because I could be you know, playing an online game with you and chatting with you over the internet at the same time. And those are two different connections. And we want the number of required messages to set up this connection, to, to run this handshake, to be as few as possible. So that's where you get to do some designing. Here are your constraints. Computer A can send an initial message to computer B, requesting a new connection. Computer B can respond to any messages from computer A, and computer A can respond to any messages from computer B. So think about it for a minute. Try to design a handshake protocol that lets all of our goals be achieved under our communication rules. So here's what actually happens in the TCP handshake protocol. 
Computer A wants to initiate a communication session with computer B. So it sends what's called a synchronization request, which says, hey, can you hear me? If you can, please return one more than this random number I've generated. So that's a way that computer A can verify that computer B is actually responding to its request because it's generated this random number. And so if computer B is actually responding to some other request, it won't have the right incremented random number when it sends something back. So computer A said, can you hear me? If so, increment one, two, three. And computer B responds by saying, ah, oh, no problem. One, two, four is one more than the number that you sent. So I can hear you, but can you hear me? And so computer B generates a random number of its own. Seven, six, five, let's say. And says, hey, computer A, if you can hear me, send me one more than the number that I sent you. And so computer A acknowledges that by saying, yes, I heard you. The next number in the sequence is seven, six, six. So that's the handshake protocol, which requires three messages to be sent. This whole thing establishes a packet numbering system, which is used throughout the rest of the session. So the random number that computer A generated in its first synchronization request is used as the first number in the packet sequence. And every other packet that it generates from then on will have an incremented number. So that computer B knows what order of information was sent in and it can reorder anything that went out of order as it was passing through the network. And computer B will generate a random number when it sends its first acknowledgement and synchronization request, and all of the messages from computer B to computer A will follow that numbering sequence from now on. Okay, so then data can be sent from A to B or from B to A for as long as this TCP connection is open. And then when one decides that it's done, A can send a termination signal at which point computer B says, well, if you don't want to talk to me, I don't want to talk to you either, it acknowledges that it received the termination signal and sends its own termination signal, which computer A acknowledges. So notice there's a lot of acknowledgement going on in the TCP, which is a good thing because it makes sure that both computers know that their messages are being received. But it does have some overhead of extra messages being sent which don't contain any new data, they're just acknowledgements. And there are lots of these floating around the internet. There are a few applications where we don't want to incur this overhead, so we come up with our own protocol. But almost always, this is the one we want to use.